Bob Black with Midrange versus Smash 83. Now this version is a mix of the Preacher um, and Vein Ripper, as well as having the Shieldred and the One Ring combination, which I think is very strong actually. So let's try this deck out. And yeah, this hand is okay. Don't have a payoff with this. Um, Death Touch and Life Link without a plus one plus one counter on the Bowmasters. Chase, what does this. Um, Temple Garden. This could be Window Tower. Should I kill it with the Bowmasters? I will, just to, you know, make it no longer undying. The opponent has their own Bowmasters. It's turning that into a 2-2. Um, let's play this. I have two now, so that's okay. And it can hold off of this army for now. Now, if the opponent plays Natural Order now, this game is pretty much over. But it's a threat. Which also makes things difficult. Um, there's no full combo yet, I think. But this is going to be difficult. So, I can give this plus one plus one, but the opponent can do things in between. If I play the Bowmasters, these triggers will fizzle. So, I think just giving this... Um, okay, the opponent can... I think I'm just going to attack here first. Oops, that was a mistake, as usual. Yeah, this is uh, this is a very unpleasant situation to be in, to be honest. So the opponent is starting to use up things. Locking it with that. Okay. It has my the preacher has death touch. So it will just die. Okay. Fine. Now I can play a Thought Seas. Taking. Wow. The Blood Heart. <laughs> wow, the opponent has the full combo here, I think. So it has to be the blood artist. It's the only it's the one thing that can kill me outright and play another one of these. Yeah, but this is gonna be very difficult. equals 2, what is that gonna be? 
Ah, the DS. Yeah, alright. So now the opponent will infinitely create tokens, creatures, etc. So there is no point to continue. So Necromantia sounds good. Creature or enchantment, some creature removal. Seems good. The bowmasters seem not that great, so I'm gonna take them out and, and have another shielded. Shielded is good because whenever the opponent draws, the trigger happens. Um, yeah. I can demonic tutor something up. On turn two. Not sure what. Maybe, yeah, just a shield rip, then I have a nice curve. Inquisition, unfortunately, cannot take a natural order. Yep. So we will surely take the voice. And there is natural order as well, two of them actually. So I think this game is pretty much. When it is off one land, that's the only thing that kind of. I have four mana available. Um, two natural orders, so whatever I fetch up here, if it, if I fetch up a Thoughtseize or whatever, it's not going to do anything. So what can help me against natural order? Necromancia. The opponent will get some zombies though, and then... The opponent will get to play the Yawgmoth as well. So, yeah, that's unfortunate, but I mean, it's an out here at least. I mean, at least I'm not just directly dead. So, that's okay. Now, the zombie army will be difficult to deal with. Well, I have the Preacher. So, let's start by doing this. Quick peek, but this seems like a very um, standard version. Has the haywire might, has another voice. All right. So yeah, this is hurting. This hurts a lot. But it was a mu it ha I had to do it. There was no way I couldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. And this now makes every creature basically another card in hand as well, which is also very unpleasant. Next turn I have six mana available, so if I draw any kind of three drop, I can play, but I didn't. So now I will just play the creature. That's the turn. So I'm still pretty much on the back foot here. But I don't think I made any major mistakes. That's the combo now as well. The opponent just needs to find the blood artist and then it's uh, pretty much game here. Yep. 
Whenever I play Yawgmoth, it doesn't turn out this well. <laughs> I've only... I've had a pretty bad showing with the Yawgmoth deck, even though I know it's one of the better, or it's definitely a great deck. Um... Let's see. Oh, the Vein Ripper would also be amazing against this because every time a creature dies, you it's like two to drain. So maybe I draw that next time. So the Vein Ripper basically negates the opponent's deck, I think. So actually, I'm my deck is actually at a quite advantage, but it just didn't work out so far. But let's see. The opponent's at eight. So let us draw a Vein Ripper, please. Nope, just a castle and drawing is going to hurt me so much. Alright, this one shouldn't be. Let's just look forward to the next match then. Mono Black mid range versus Last Haven Unicorn. The opponent shall begin. is not looking too good here. Children looking good though. Children looking real good. Will I make it to the children turn? Yeah, this is a must. It hurts me here right now, but yeah, taking the Eidolon is pretty important here. Or pretty useful. Now, two Swift Spears, now the Kumanu. Already gonna go down pretty low here. The Bowmasters can stem the bleeding a little bit. So, two Bowmaster turns and then the Shepherd. So this okay. Yep. Wow. So this is gonna hurt so bad. Wait, the opponent didn't attack with that? Okay, so then I can actually take out one of these sorts of here. Oh yeah, it's, sorry, it's not dashed. Yeah, then makes sense because then I would lose the counter as well, of course. So the opponent just played it without dashing. So just playing a Soren isn't gonna do much. Or basically, it's not doing anything. So I'm up. F I need. To these Bowmasters need to help me survive the next turn. Help. Yeah. It's gonna be very tight. The Shieldred gain life gain will not come into effect until the following turn. Master, to put it on the Ragavan, block the Ragavan, block this, yeah, 
reduce the damage as much as possible. The Chandler now being a... yeah, that's unfortunate. Probably is not enough here. Unless the opponent doesn't have a... Okay, okay, so there is a chance here now. There is... now things are looking pretty good actually, so let's... Push this first. Take out this. Block this, block this. Now the opponent will have the Loras and will of course get the Dragon Rage Channel back. Yeah. So that's gonna still be a problem here. But I will gain lifelink, right? Yeah, that's that's um, I think that's even enough, isn't it? Um, or should I just play the ring? Let's just play the ring. Draw another life, gain another life here. Should I even attack? Yeah, I mean, the opponent can't harm me next turn. Yeah, this should be, should be, uh, should be good here. Channelers are <laughs> threatening, at least, um, for sure. But the opponent is... Oh, wait, yeah, just drawing with this next turn will kill the opponent. So, well, okay, but the opponent will attack with this now and gain some life. So it's still really close on defense. Okay, yeah. Didn't attack with this, that means then it's basically over. So let's just draw. Oh, no, no, sorry so confused no of course me just drawing will with the shield it will not affect the opponent in any way so what's the play here definitely yeah let's draw first i will draw i want to draw i want to gain some life okay and now i just play another ring and then it's good no we're good Yeah, I'll attack too. Okay, yeah, the opponent can also yeah, keep getting stuff back. I'm doing this because I have another shield grid anyway, so I'm okay. Um, so, yeah, this Loras is doing a lot of work and I wasn't able to get rid of it at all so far, which is quite unfortunate. But still, if the opponent doesn't attack with it now, but now the opponent will attack with it, oh no. Okay, so no, well, oh no, wait, wait, wait. Wow, this is going, <laughs> my emotions are going back and forth. No, the, the Loras will not gain life, of course, because of the ring. So now, I can finally just play the shield red. Activate, draw, bunch of cards. Still not kill that um Still not kill that Loras though. Wow, this is 
a weird game. Weird in the sense that I've never had these kind of interactions before. Okay, the opponent's finally at two now, so hopefully now the, the next children trigger can just get done with it. I will not block with shielded probably. I don't want. Okay. Yeah, now we should be good. Yeah, gain some life again. Just play the Vayne Ripper. And I think this is. Good. No attack. Don't want to give the opponent a chance to gain life by blocking with the Loras. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just thinking what I think, right? So sometimes what I say isn't really correct but I'm just thinking out loud here okay uh, feed the swarm not too great basically shielded is good and that's it so take out the thoughtsies for that I even have to keep in the thoughtsies because my deck doesn't really have much I can bring in against this deck like do I really want to bring on an Ashiok just for the Loras? Not really. The Loras, I just have to kill it. It will get one trigger off though in that case. But yeah, let's hope that the game just doesn't go that long and I can land a Shieldred or a Vein Ripper much earlier. With the help of the Dark Ritual. Okay, that's also an option. So this looks pretty sweet. Alright, Kamano is good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Tomon's Crypt. Why would you bring in Tomon's Crypt? Which black deck has graveyards? Shenanigans. Okay. No creature? No creature. Okay. Just need to survive a little longer. Is that a non-token creature? Yeah, it is, right? Yeah, it is. It's transformed. Um, a Roiling Vortex. Ooh, my, I can't gain life. So that could be a problem, but the Vein Ripper is just going to make short work of the opponent in two turns, so should still be good. Why am I using... Why do I want to use the Shield Red? Because it's just more expensive and the opponent's Creatures are, should all be one, less one or one or two mana only creatures, so non-token creature here. All right. Damage. Play the Soren. the Vein Ripper into play. I'm not sure what is happening. Welcome to the family. All right, this is a two turn clock. Oh, 
Rolling Vortex, pretty pretty nice card. It deals with the uh, show and tell deck and it deals against any decks that have some kind of life gain. Based mainly this deck because the black decks are the ones which have the most life gain I would say. So, um, Murderous at Markov Manor definitely uh, shook up the format a little bit. Not, sh nah, let's not say shook up, but brought some interesting new additions here. Show and tell, and then also this Vein Ripper here. Um, created this new archetype in combination with this Sauron Imperious Bloodlord. Opponent is roping. But that gives us time to appreciate this beautiful artwork of all these cards. Um, is there anything I can Katakanuma back? There isn't actually. All right, let's do this. Even though I bestow, I want to gain life probably. So the Sorin's actually okay even with non-vampires, it's obviously the main value from it comes from putting Vein Ripper in the field but also giving your vampires plus one counters in addition to the death touch and lifelink but even giving a creature who is not a vampire death touch and lifelink does give some value, death touch for example, gaining some life here and there can definitely make, um, make the difference. I'll attack. And oh the opponent didn't activate the Royal Vortex actually. Alright, then this is this should be game. I can even just sacrifice to do to deal the three damage. At least, well, I can already say that then, um, yeah, happy to grab a win here. Mono Red probably being one of the better um, matchups for this deck, despite the Roiling Vortex. All right, let's see how the next games go. Mono Black Midrange versus Ezekiel Abaddon. first and this is quite the curve one two three four Let's see what we're up against could almost take the charm but we will take the save route and go with the order. Yeah. The risk of the opponent just drawing a grazer is just too high. Now the only thing that's stopping me from playing out this nice curve is another land. I'm missing. There you go. So that would have backfired if I had not taken the natural order. Alright, 
so I needed this vein ripper pretty urgently to be honest. Well, that works too. I have not survived millennia to stand down now. First, and put the flame ripper out. Markov grew stronger. So it's enough. Searching for a creature or land card. Castle. Oh, this is pretty nice as well. All right. I bestow a mighty curse. Yeah. Next turn, the opponent's dead. The opponent will play the. Titan, which I will immediately edict, so the opponent will only be left with a few zombies here. Yeah, and the Vein Ripper flies, which is super relevant. And makes it so strong. If it didn't fly, it would still be pretty good for sure, but flying really takes it over the top. This is good. The bow masters are pretty useless, I would say. Let's bring in that. Uh, do we want the black market connections or anything? I don't even think I need the fatal potions, so I'd even bring in the black market just to have like ramp. Ramp and some early aggression, I would say. Uh, feed the swarm is uh, now. Go for, I have to go for the throat, so. Yeah. So, my deck is not too well equipped against the Titan deck, I would say. I mean, Thought Seize, yes. And the Ashiok, yeah. And then obviously trying to get off a quick. All right. Could be a. Could be okay with a turn three vein ripper again, using the tutor to search it out. But depends on how fast the opponent's hand is. Well, I don't even have to look, look for it anymore. Now I could just grab a thought seize with the tutor, but the question is, do I want to do that? Or an Ashiok. Or the Ashiok. Or the um, Necromantia. But there's so many things you have to take with the Necromantia. Field of the Bed Dead is already on the battlefield. So it's probably Ashiok. Might be too late though. If the opponent plays natural order next, it's gonna be tough. Uh, 
Alright, doesn't have it. So... Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do this. It's enough. All right. Um, so the opponent did get his sideboard cards in. Okay. So. Ah, damn it. Was the Titan. So, should yeah. So I played that incorrectly. I. No, okay, well, no. If I had played the Ashiok, it would have also been Get Losted. So, Get Lost is the cyber card for the opponent's deck. Um, okay, is there anything I can do to stay in this game? Well, this is Death Touch, but yeah, the opponent will grab two more lands and then the, the zombies will start taking over. Um, so, yeah, this one is basically over yeah so did I change anything no this game is just who gets their unfair stuff down earlier. <laughs> okay. Oh, these hands are actually not too bad at all. Let's start off with the Inquisition. Alright. Oh my god, I should have started with the other one. Wow, that was such a myth. Ooh, that was bad. That was very bad. I was just giving away man that turn and the card everything at once. So now I have yes. That's quite terrible. Um so I shall grab the uh, ripper. Why? Because the opponent is one turn behind me, so I s I still have that advantage. Alright, so still going for this. Uh, <laughs> the opponent's gonna be angry having the Bane Ripper every single turn. But I mean, I had it with the uh, Demonic Tutor. Now I can Thought Seize away the natural order. And play the creature. So we do have a chance here. So let's begin by doing this. Blood calls to your soul. Yep, that does uh, relevant. This, this. Fear, terror, and so now the opponent cannot the search, right? The perfect meal. So I'll probably even just take the tent. Now the opponent can seek and find it get lost. Usually this thing gets the Titan anyway, so it's not really a difference. So I think I'm in a decent spot here. And gaining a lot of life gives me a little bit more leeway.
So the opponent can't fetch with the windswept heath either. This won't work either. Give the counter to the preacher this time so that it can take out the, the, the grazer in case the grazer drop blocks it. And they just want to press the turn. So this does target actually, so it could be Veil of Summer, the ability, target opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. Oh, I didn't take that into account, but we have a go for the throat, I have a go for the throat as well. The opponent has seen enough, which I can fully understand. <laughs> Alright, so, um, yeah, that went pretty well. Um, I was lucky with the draws, I guess. Um, but against this deck, it seems to be very important who plays first, as it's usual. But in this case, it's especially important because, yeah, getting down the Vein Ripper on three is kind of crucial to get ahead of the Titan Madness. Let's put it that way. All right, on to the next game. Mono Black mid range versus Rio Marco. I shall play first and I shall keep. It is a slowish hand, but I'll take it. Off to the races with the Chandler. At least it's not a Ragavan. That would be even worse. That's pretty bad. Because it's... Uh, legendary. Um, well, do I want to play on curve or do I want to make sure the coast is clear with the Inquisition? This could be exactly counter spell. But if I play Inquisition here, I'm not playing anything else, which is just too much. So I have to take the risk there. Creature is also quite a good card to be in. And it's a 2-4, which is, yeah, exactly what I was just going to say. It survives Bolt. At least one single Bolt, but not two. So will the opponent, yeah, has to use up the Unholy Heat. Which now potentially gives my Shieldred free reign. So the opponent did have another unholy heat. All right, now my chances of winning have decreased quite. Oh, two, it's Phoenix too. Oh wow. Okay. And the cruise.
Nope. That was... I don't think I could have done anything much different there. Alright, so... Ashiox... Tomod's Crypt... Leyline. Wow, this sideboard is... Um, heavy on the... Uh, graveyard hate. So, what do I not want then? Yeah, I don't need all of these discard spells. I do like creature removal. There won't be any enchantments. So there's no need for feed the swamp. Let's go down on this as well. Not really keepable. Yeah, this one's better. What shall I put back? Let's put the vein where I put back for now. I am that which nightmares themselves fear. Old minus. <laughs> The thing is, with the turn one, Ashok is not only you threaten their graveyard, but the fetch lands don't work. So if the opponent had a few fetch lands in their hand, you're just they're landlocked immediately and have to wait to draw. Wow, this is brutal for the opponent, I would say. So I will not rush out the Ashiok here into an open one mana. As I am expecting spell pierce. I will take it slow. Just demonic tutor. Grabbing the Okay, yep, as expected. So drawing out the spell pierce is fine too. Now I can... Yeah, let's play this. I have another one. Yep. Another spell pierce. Mm, that looting. Okay, so the opponent has to go all in on the... Uh, on that. Okay, so this gives me the chance to play the one. This has Death Touch, which is also incredible. Alright, that's a good dragon. Oh, okay, I would, have, I would have expected the opponent to uh, dash that one. So I shall play. Soren. Welcome to the family. Pass. All 
Alright, so I still need to... I'm going to have to deal with Giganta. But with this ring drawing three cards next turn, I'm pretty confident that it'll be enough. Alright, so it seems that uh, graveyard-based decks are easy targets for this. Um, but I mean, I do have to admit, I had the Ashiok both turn, both game two and three, and then the Ley Line. So I did have the very favorable hand. But def this deck is definitely a great option. I, I really like drawing this deck. You're resistant to Blood Moon. You have the Hand Hate. You have the Creature Removal. You have value creatures such as this. You have the big one in the Vein Ripper. You have the Planeswalker. To, you have Life Gain. Um, yeah, there's not... And you don't need Graveyard. So there's a lot of pluses. You have the Shielded and the One Ring combo, which I really like as well. You have the Demonic Tutor. So, yeah, definitely a good choice. Uh, and I can only recommend uh, this deck. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have fun and see you in the arena. Leave a comment and a like if you have the time. It's always greatly appreciated. Peace out.